Hello everyone and welcome to another culturally appropriated video. But before we get into that guys, I have some exciting news. I got really tired of having these shit black lines on the side of my avatar, so through hours of pain and suffering I carefully photoshopped a new one that takes care of the problem. So without further ado, I present the all new AmeriCap avatar screen. I know, impressive isn't it? I also have this one with an American flag. So let me know in the comments which one you prefer. But enough of that garbage. Let's get into today's cancer-inducing topic. This is a homage Now, for those of you who don't know, a few days ago, some guy named Jeremy Lamb posted this on Twitter, saying his culture is not a goddamn prom dress. Now, as one might expect, the collective autism of the internet lashed out at the girl in the photo, calling the dress racist and cultural appropriation and all sorts of nonsense. Now, I'm glad to say that she didn't apologize and instead stood her ground and posted this, saying basically that she didn't mean to be disrespectful, However, she also refuses to take it down because she's shown nothing but love for Chinese culture and that the dress was part of that love. However, my problem is not with her, it's with her accuser. Now, whenever people start throwing around the term cultural appropriation, everyone's white guilt begins to set in and they immediately start apologizing in an effort to not look racist. This usually happens around Halloween, but lucky for us, retardation came early this year. While I somewhat understand when people get upset about little kids wearing Indian costumes, even then I think it's ridiculous. Because there are tons of offensive costumes. And believe it or not, taking offense to them is a choice. If you choose to be offended by these costumes, then you are actively choosing to let it bother you, and in a sense, you are robbing yourself of joy. Oh. Uh. uh okay. Ugh. Shit, maybe they have a point. But still, taking offense to these costumes is a personal choice. A choice that I personally don't feel I need to make. It's not that I don't care about the suffering or the, the, the horridness of the events that are behind these costumes or, or the, the, the problems each of these cultures went through to get where they are today. It's not that I don't care. It's just that I have two options. I can either laugh about it or get upset about it. And of the two options, I find that just laughing about it happens to be a lot more enjoyable. And so maybe everyone else could take a lesson from my book and just, I don't know, take it easy? Have a laugh? Like, don't get so offended? It's pretty fucking easy. Now, Jeremy Lamb's justification for the tweet was that the garment in question had a history behind it and a deeper meaning in Chinese culture. Posting, unrelated fun fact, a thread, the qui pow, the quit pro quo, the qui, the quidditch, the, whatever the fuck that word says, was originally a loose dress slash garment without shape, made for Chinese women to clean the house and do other domestic chores with. It was then altered and embroidered as a beautiful form-fitting outfit to wear publicly, which Chinese women were not allowed to do at during the times of extreme patriarchal oppression. In a time where Asian women were silenced, they were able to create not only a piece of art, but a symbol of activism. This piece of clothing embraced femininity, confidence, and gender equality through its beautiful, eye-catching appearance. Well, if it was so wonderful, Jeremy, why are you upset this poor girl was wearing it? Anyway, <clears throat> it even broke the division of financial classes. It could be made with high-quality materials that only the upper class could afford, such as special silks and linens. But a dress just as beautiful could have been made with just cotton and low-quality linen. Wasn't that nice? A dress for everyone. Well, everyone except white people, that is. <clears throat> Femme factory workers wore this dress. And the style was then spread throughout Asia as a beautiful garment and a sign of women's liberation. In short, I'm proud of my culture, including the extreme barriers marginalized people within that culture have had to overcome those 
obstacles. Wait, what the fuck is this grammar? <clears throat> For it to simply be subject to American consumerism and cater to a white audience is parallel to colonial ideology. Now, basically what he's trying to say here in as many big, unnecessary words as possible is that the garment has a deep cultural history, so it can't be worn by white people because racism. Now, based off of this line of reasoning, I feel it's necessary to call out some cultural appropriation that really hits home for me. You see, I'm mostly French and German, and I'm just so sick and tired of seeing people wearing lederhosen and berets. Oh, uh, but Cap, that's not cultural appropriation because you're white and those clothes don't have deep cultural histories, duh. Well, I'm glad you said that, dipshit, because they actually do. According to Wikipedia, the Basquet-style berets were traditional headgear for shepherds of the Anzo and Ronco valleys of the Pyrenees in France. And by the 1920s, it became a symbol for the working class in France, so... You're appropriating my culture. You're appropriating my culture. You're definitely appropriating my culture, and you look like a faggot while you're doing it. Oh, this guy's appropriating my culture, and he's a dipshit. Oh, she's definitely appropriating my culture. Man, what a racist. Oh, once again, another dipshit appropriating my culture. Now, as for lederhosen, Wikipedia says that they were traditional German boys' clothing and Bavarian men's clothing meant for hard physical work that came to be associated with virility and brawn. In the 19th century, its popularity dropped because it was seen as peasant clothing, but in 1880, it saw a resurgence with several clubs seeking to preserve traditional clothing styles, which eventually led to lederhosen being seen as a festive garment. So, once again, you're appropriating my culture. You're appropriating my culture. You're definitely appropriating my culture, man. Not cool. Oh, look, I had no idea Sam L. Jackson was a racist. Now, we can play this game all day. But let's check out this Jeremy guy and see just how woke he really is. Oh man, looks like we got a soy boy. Man, and an edgy one at that, located in eating ass. <laughs> he must be woke as fuck. I mean, hell, just look at his Twitter handle. Jer Bear. I mean, that just screams woke as hell, man. All right, let's look at this guy's tweets. Frosted Flakes, nigga damn. Got Sometimes you can't say anything else besides one thing. Nigga damn. <laughs> Got it. You're gay. <laughs> Got it. I'm eating tamales with chopsticks. This is why America was founded. <laughs> Got it. Well, I'm, I'm sure that's out of context because, I mean, I mean he's clearly woke AF, guys. I, I mean, just look at this. How are niggers so damn loud? That's crazy! Oh, okay. Well, let's see his explanation. He's probably got a solid explanation for these tweets. See, I knew he had a great explanation. Those tweets were in the past. He's a better person now. A woke person. Oh, wait, this... This tweet was from January. I, I I guess four months is all it takes to transition from being a blatant racist to being a woke AF soy boy, right? R right? <sighs> well, we've learned a great lesson today, folks. Only white people can be racist, but anyone can be a hypocrite. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. Also, big announcement, I have an official Teespring storefront, and I've been working on it for the last two days, so I now have a shit ton of products for you to buy. I've got shirts, stickers, socks, mugs, posters, pillows, tote bags, and even beach towels, so if you're interested, go ahead and click the link below for all sorts of goodies. So, until next time, this has been AmeriCap, your friendly neighborhood American capitalist. Goodbye. This, this, this is a homage beat.